Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Tor Olson, Software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and today we're going to be taking a look inside of Final Cut Pro at our video sharpening plugin, Samurai Sharpen. What we're going to be looking over in this tutorial are the basic parameters for Samurai Sharpen and how they work together to get the sharpening look that you might want, as well as the masking parameters to help you restrain where you're applying your sharpening. So this would help you to avoid areas that are typically problematic with sharpening, such as areas with lots of noise in usually the darkest areas of the frame, here and here for instance, or exclude highlight areas where you have areas of the frame that are already very bright. Um, and with sharpening, those areas can get blown out and lose a lot of their detail. It helps to cut off our sharpening from being applied there as well. But before we get into our masking, we might as well go through the basic parameters and how they work together. So this footage is actually pretty great because because we have lots of edges and small details in the frame that we can sharpen to show off the effect. So the first parameter that we're going to be looking at is amount, which is fairly straightforward. The higher we rank up our amount, the more detail will be in our image. So as you can see, when I crank up our amount and just toggle the effect on and off, you can see that we're bringing a lot of sharpening into the image. You can especially see it along the edge of the mouth of the guitar, along the strings, uh, and even in the smaller detail of, say, the lettering for the brand name inside of the guitar. And so if you haven't noticed, there's also this small halo right along the edge of the mouth of the guitar and the string that makes it really obvious what's going on. So what's happening with most sharpening filters is we're increasing the contrast along the edges in the frame, such as, say, the side of the mouth of the guitar here. And so we're making the dark side darker and the light side lighter. And this creates a contrast between the two sides so that the image looks much sharper. A great way of illustrating um, how this halo works is by increasing our radius. Our radius defines how wide that halo is. So if I were to say choose a radius that's much higher, something like a, a maybe a radius of five, you'd be able to see that the width of that halo is much larger. Now, this isn't necessarily what we want to go for. Typically, you want to keep your radius for most sharpening work between 0.5 and maybe two. Going much higher than that will get you this really stylized look. You know, you can even crank up radius even higher to get kind of a faux HDR effect uh, for some neat stylized looks. But for this tutorial, that's not necessarily what we want. We'll bring our radius down to something more manageable, like uh, one. And that kind of gives you a short overview of how amount and radius work together. Mount controls the intensity and radius increases the size of our halos. Now, edge mask strength, for those of you who might have worked in Photoshop or After Effects with any sharpening filters like Unsharp Mask, this functions a lot like threshold. And what edge mask strength defines is how well defined an edge needs to be so that sharpening will be applied to it. Uh, one great example of where sharpening can kind of go awry without edge mask strength is in this portrait shot I have. Now, if I zoom in on, you know, the area most interest right here, and I toggle Samurai on and off, you'll see that we already have our set values. What we really want to apply sharpening to in portrait shots are eyes, you know, nostrils, um, mouth or teeth, and hair and not so much the skin. What can become really problematic is having really nitty gritty skin detail because we've ramped up our sharpening so much. And you can actually see this by uh, me selecting show sharpening. So the masking is fairly straightforward. Uh, anything that is white is where we're applying the sharpening effect. Anywhere that is black, um, we are not applying any sharpening. And so with edge mask strength set to zero, we're applying sharpening to the entire image and all the edges that are in it. And that includes the skin. So you can see that we got a lot of sharpening going on in the skin, which we don't necessarily want. Now, because the edges in the skin 
are so close in color to one another and are very subtle, when I start increasing edge mask strength, it's only going to be applying the sharpening to edges that are very obvious. So not the skin, but very much so, you know, the contour of the eye, maybe the shine inside of it, the hair, uh, her teeth, and any edges that are very obvious and relevant to what we want to apply our sharpening to. So if I go ahead and turn show sharpening on again, and let's say we'll change it to maybe the default for edge mask strength 10, you'll be able to see that we're getting a much darker image, um, but we're still applying the sharpening to areas of interest, such as the shine, you know, the edges of the eyebrow you can see, and her hair as well. I actually might crank this up higher, maybe until we start to see a lot of the detail in the skin start to fall off. there you can even see that we're still having all the detail in the eye kept but the skin is much darker so the eyebrow is very apparent the eye is very apparent the hair but not so much the skin so if I turn show sharpening back off and toggle um, samurai on and off you'll be able to see that while we're getting a lot of good sharpening in the eye we're really leaving a lot of the skin alone exactly what we want. Probably the same in the detail of her teeth. You'll see that while we're leaving the skin alone, it's nice and soft. We are doing a lot of good sharpening to the teeth, making the image look crisp where it needs to. So that's what Edge Mask Strength does, is that it limits the sharpening to only the areas of interest where the edges are most apparent keeping low frequency areas like her skin intact and, and not super detailed, which can be distracting. So those are the three main parameters, amount radius and edge mask strength. And in the same vein of what we're doing with edge mask strength, where we're confining where we're applying our sharpening, we can accomplish the same principle by using our shadow and highlight mask. So we're gonna show that off. And the best place to do so is in our guitar comp. And we're zoomed in quite a bit. Our edge mask strength down a bit so we can get kind of the detail and especially in the grain of the guitar. If I toggle that on and off, you'll be able to see, hopefully. Hopefully this gets past the uh, compression on YouTube and you'll be able to see all the detail. One of the parts of sharpening that can be problematic is the noise in the darkest portions of our frame. What ends up happening when you increase the sharpness is that all this noise here uh, gets accentuated. So, whereas before, you know, it might have been a little bit softer, our sharpening that we were applying to our entire image is also sharpening up that noise. And this is a lot of gross detail that we don't really want. What Shadow Mask allows me to do is I can confine the sharpening to areas that are above a certain threshold of darkness. So, I'm going to go ahead and use our Show Mask parameter and click use shadow mask and right away you'll be able to see that where there's anything that's dark or pure black we're going to be excluding our samurai effect anywhere that's white we're going to be applying our effect so we have a shadow black level this is the bottom cutoff for our darkness and a shadow black midpoint and what this defines is where our cutoff is for the white all the way down to our gray and eventually black so when I increase our midpoint, you'll be able to see that we're increasing more of the shot. I might want to bring it up to 41, which is fine. And then I can also increase our shadow black level so that we're really cutting off the most problematic area, which was basically all the noise that was on this side of the E string of the guitar. Increase that a little bit more. And there we're getting a really good cutoff of our sharpening. If I click show mask and go ahead and toggle sh uh, use shadow mask, you'll be able to see the difference in the noise that we were able to eliminate from the shot. So with our shadow mask and without it. And just for comparison's sake, I'm gonna turn off the effect as well so that you'll be able to see that we're still getting a good amount of sharpening applied to our clip. 
Another good way of illustrating our shadow and highlight mask is by looking at a curve graph. This might be familiar to those of you who have worked in Photoshop or other Adobe apps. And so to just draw some comparisons with our parameters, this would be our shadow black level, and this would be our shadow midpoint. So you can see there's a fall off for what's being considered sharpened with everything at the very top here being completely white. So where we're applying our effect. What we just did when we constrained those parameters is brought our black level and our black midpoint slightly to the right so that the cutoff for the effect was a little bit greater. So that we know that we're not applying any sharpening to the areas where noise is most apparent all around this range of the curve. Similarly, with the highlight white level and white midpoint that we're gonna be talking about in a sec, you can constrain those here with the midpoint and here with the level. And so we're gonna do that right now. If I go back to our comp, what I'll probably wanna do first is note where we're getting a lot of destruction in our clip. So where are the highlights in the clip where a lot of detail is being lost? And I can kind of see it right up here in the inlay of the guitar. You can see that while we're getting a little bit of detail, some light blues and maybe turquoise colors in the inlay of the guitar, when we're applying our sharpening, some of those areas get blown out. So because they were near white before, by applying sharpening and having our radius large enough, maybe I might make this two to make it a little more apparent, a lot of those areas are getting such a contrast enhanced that they're being completely blown out to full white. So we're losing all that detail, which we don't want. So what I'm gonna do is click again on Show Mask, and I'm going to click Use Highlight Mask so that we can exclude those areas. And right away, you can tell that we're already starting to include those highlight areas that were being destroyed originally. I might actually constrain those a little bit more don't want to include too much of the grain in the wood of the guitar. Still want to be able to cut off those areas of detail in the inlay. And I think that did a pretty good job. I'll go ahead and click Show Mask so we can look at our original image again. You can already see that we're getting a lot of those light blue details in that inlay. If I were to switch off our Use Highlight Mask, see that it gets blown out again. So shadow and highlight mask are really useful tools in terms of helping you avoid traditionally problematic areas like those with lots of noise and those areas that are already near white that could potentially be blown out. But that's really all there is to using Samurai Sharpen. However, it might have been difficult to see some of the finer detail in this tutorial. I know the YouTube compression can make it difficult to see really subtle changes that are inherent to something like sharpening. If that is the case, you can go to digitalanarchy.com where we have free trials of Samurai, as well as all of our other plugins. We have free plugins as well, and tutorials like this one, and lots of goodies for your enjoyment. Again, I'm Tor Olson, software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.